In the comedy movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, there was one silly little phrase which became very popular, especially among young people, at least young people at that time. One of the two, I forget which one, made some revolutionary, mind-boggling suggestion. And the other repeated, no way. Then to add to the levity, the other said with brevity, way. So next time your kids or grandkids say no way to you, just try saying back to them, way. They probably won't get it. And they may think you're a nerd, but it will be fun. Well, even more revolutionary and mind-boggling than the suggestion in Bill and Ted's excellent adventure is the revolutionary and mind-boggling suggestion of Easter. Christ is risen. No way. Way. And here is the resultant revolutionary and mind-boggling suggestion. After our dead bodies are buried and decayed, they will be raised gloriously on the last day. No way. Way. Look at the revolutionary and mind-boggling suggestion in our text from Acts. Uh, Paul, the premier persecutor of Christianity, becomes the heir apostle to the Gentiles for Christianity, which, by the way, is called the way in our text. No way. 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 And guess what? You and I share that same glorious status and that sh same glorious task. If God can find a way to include us in his kingdom, he can certainly find a way to extend his kingdom on earth through us. Now look at Paul, who is still called Saul at this time. Before his Damascus conversion, he thought that the law was the way. And he was pretty good at it, but not good enough. Our text describes him as a murderous, threat-breathing persecutor. Paul was a perfect example of someone uh, trying to get to God through the law, and with that approach, we can truly say, no way. But then came Paul's conversion. He was confronted by the risen Christ, the same Christ who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. In Christ's own way, he converted Paul to the way. Paul then became our Lord's chosen instrument. In verse 15, we read, But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. Now, the common response to Paul's conversion was, No way. But we can hear our Lord saying, Way. Paul did not enter God's kingdom by observing the law. We do not enter God's kingdom by observing the law. That's not the way. Besides, we're not very good when it comes to following God's law. Listen to Paul in Romans 3.20. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. The law says no way to us. The law condemns us. It, it shows us our weakness. It brings us to our knees. The law, which says to us, no way to God here, prepares us for the only way, which is Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us in Galatians 2.16, we know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law, because by observing the law, no one will be justified. Jesus Christ is the way, the only way. Through his act of obedience, he fulfilled his Father's law perfectly in our place. Through his passive obedience, he paid the price for our disobeying God's law in our place. That is the way. Now, a natural response to the gospel message is, no way. God wouldn't do that for us. God couldn't do that for us. No way. Way. The cross of Calvary shows us he would, and the empty tomb of Easter shows us he did. Christ is risen, and he has confronted us.
The same resurrected Christ who appeared to Paul has appeared to us as well. Oh, not as dramatically with a blinding light, but just as surely in God's word and sacrament. Now, when it comes to conversion, there is no way we can convert ourselves. We have no reason to convert ourselves. The gospel doesn't make any sense to our reason. We have no strength to convert ourselves. We're too weak. In fact, by nature, we're spiritually dead. We don't even have the will to convert ourselves. The human will only reacts to worldly stimuli, and there is nothing in this world worth reacting to which will make us spiritually alive. There is no way we can convert ourselves. But there is a way to be converted, and that way is the Holy Spirit working through the means of grace, God's word, and sacrament. God converts through his spoken word. In Romans 10, 17, Paul says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. God converts through his word connected with the waters of holy baptism. In Titus 3, 5, we read, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saves us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. God converts through these means of grace. We call this immediate conversion. Now, Paul's conversion was immediate, but Scripture teaches us that God has promised to send his Holy Spirit through these means of grace. And even more amazing than these means is God's grace itself. It is indeed amazing grace. By grace, Paul's eyes were opened. By grace, our eyes have been opened. Listen to that famous hymn, Amazing Grace, verse 1. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. We are in the way by faith. And now we are on the way in God's church. The book of Acts talks a lot about the church. It demonstrates the growth of the early Christian church. The book of Acts provides a link between what Jesus did and taught and what the church now does and teaches. And Jesus gives the church her job description in the first chapter of the book of Acts. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That is what the Christian church does. And that's what it continues to do to this day. Look at who we are by grace, and then look at what we do by grace. Like Paul, we are chosen instruments to proclaim the gospel. If God can choose murderous, uh, persecuting people like Paul, like we all were by nature into his kingdom, he can certainly use people like you and me to extend his kingdom on earth. Now you might be thinking, no way. I mean, you might be afraid. I mean, it is a jungle out there. You might feel weak and inadequate, especially as you reflect upon a part of your life you're not too proud of. Or you might feel downright lazy, not wanting to get off your duff. No way, you say? Well, God says way. He says that because of and for the sake of his son Jesus Christ. Christ is the way. We are in Christ. That means we are in the way. And now we are the way that Christ meets others. And we do so when we use the ways of grace, the means of grace through the ministry of this congregation. 1 Peter 2.9 we read, but you are a chosen people a royal priest, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's who we are, and that's what we do. Our catechism often talks about the office of the keys, which is given to the entire church. The church has the authority and the privilege to preach and teach God's word, to administer the sacraments, and to forgive and retain sins. What an awesome responsibility. 
what an exciting opportunity. I mean, we've got everything we need right here. We've got the chosen instruments, each of us. We've got the means of grace, God's word and sacraments. Those are the church's tools of conversion and growth in grace. The risen Christ has tied himself into these means of grace in a gracious act of anti-Platonic diplomacy. Something so simple as water and words and bread and wine might cause some people to say, no way way so the next time you get to wondering how God could possibly love you and you think no way see Christ way next time you get to wondering how on earth am I going to get beyond the grave and you think no way see Christ way and the next time you get to wondering how you can be an instrument of God to reach other people and you think no way see Christ way. Amen.